This is a quick 30 minute sort of vocal warm up, um, sort of a, te a technique top up if you like. I've called it a technique top up because um, it does feel as we're learning about how to look after our voices, vocal care, that with each little incremental thing that we learn, you're constantly topping up your knowledge. So my idea for today would be that we, as I'm sitting at the piano, I've done no singing yet today at all. So I'm inclined to start right at the beginning and take myself through all the steps. I'm just going to read you a little uh, paragraph from this lovely book here which um, is fascinating. This first paragraph in his introduction, I think really sums it up. Um, and I often feel like I'm banging my head up against a brick wall with teaching people about vocal technique because very often singers want to cut to the chase and get past all the difficult stuff. But here's why vocal technique is really important, even when you're just topping up. And it's all in this introduction. So from this book, he says, the human voice, as anyone who has studied it knows, is a remarkably complex instrument. The lungs and the rib cage, the intricate musculature of the larynx, the network of throat muscles that act on the larynx and form the resonator of the throat, all of these structures cooperate in the most subtle and marvellous ways to produce sound and enable us to carry these sounds in an infinite variety of ways. So when you're thinking about why do I do vocal technique, why do I need these top ups, that really is it. There's, it's, there's so much to learn. Let's First things first then, let's just think about, you know, do all your usual sort of Whatever you feel you need to do in order to just facilitate feeling that you are in touch with your body, okay? So when you're thinking about starting your singing, the most important relationship thing to think of is your postural alignment, okay? Now I did touch on that briefly before, so it's about feeling that balance in the body. Okay, and um, that's why I like sitting down because it gives me less to think about. I don't have to worry about my legs. But you might be standing. So think about your postural alignment. And in particular, work out what's going on with the relationship between your shoulders and your neck. As you're doing that, you're getting into the zone of concentration. Okay, and as you do that, you're going to start to become aware of your breath coming and going. So let's do that. Okay, so through an open throat, let the jaw drop and just blow away the air that you take in. So we get inhalation and just let that breath go without collapsing the body down. And do that a few times so you can really feel your general body tonus start to engage, start to become present. And so you're not just thinking about your singing here, but you're actually aware your whole body, just like he says in the book, your whole body is now sort of waking up to that. Now, as you get into that, start taking yourself through the breathing exercise. I'll do it too as well, because I haven't sort of woken my singer brain up yet. Okay, so I'm gonna say old air out and new air in. And it's really that feeling that you get in between the two exhalations, the feeling of how your body responds to allowing that air back in. Um, and I really did think then about my open throat. Sometimes if there's a little bit of constriction in there, you'll get the urge to cough. <laughs> okay, so a nice open throat, like one of those basking sharks, you know, quite big wide open throat okay now little thing we've been doing of late it's just this idea of panting okay now 
you've got to be careful with panting because I know that some people get a bit sort of hyperventilated because they can't release. But if you're doing a good little pant, right, to get yourself into the, get, get your body motivated, it has to be equal exhalation to inhalation through a lovely relaxed opening like this. And you do that for as much as you feel is useful. And whilst I was panting, I was thinking, okay, yeah, I can feel my muscles right down here below my rib cage. I can feel my, my diaphragm is obviously working. <laughs> because I'm doing the panting. But really what matters is that this is all relaxed and that, that felt good. But don't do too much of it because you can get quite lightheaded. So it's just to kind of touch base with, with your body and make sure that it's nice and alert. We're going to get started with some lip trills, just nice and gentle. We're starting down here in A major, which I think for all of you and me, is not too bad. Yeah, that feels okay. Right, so this is fairly low for me, but it might feel very comfortable for you, Debbie, for you, Sophie, and for you, Suze. Okay, but you've got to keep in mind that you've, in terms of range, we all have to be very elastic and be able to use our voices throughout the range. Okay, yeah. with our lip drills, up and down a fifth, just a nice sequence. Think about that postural alignment. Here we go, ready, and. Let's go back down to A major and do the octaves, okay? We might do these ones going up and then coming down, okay? So here we go, whole octaves, sliding, not forcing the air. Here we go, ready, and... So you're doing it gently, never trying to create or make a big sound. You're hoping that in the vocal warm-up, the technique top, the technique top-ups in this kind of warm-up idea, that you are singing on what we call the thin edge of the vocal folds. You don't want the big sounds just yet, not while you're just kind of warming up to it. Okay. All right. So now we've got to G. Let's start in F and come down. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, this sometimes is preferred by people. It seems psychologically less difficult. But uh, for some, me included, it kind of goes against the grain somewhat. Okay, so what I think about is how I release my, to get my air in 
because I know I need to rely on my larynx being in a nice, relaxed, lower position, not riding high. So as I breathe in, you can try this in a minute, I'm thinking release and enable. I'm thinking nice open throat. And I can feel my muscles down here just went ready to go. And I know that the larynx is in a favorable position. I'm more likely to get a satisfactory result. Okay, so we're gonna, the hard thing is, is going down and they're not losing your connection to go back up or squeeze to get back up. So let's see how we do. Ready and. because that was actually a bottom D below middle C. So we've done right down there. Tell me how that felt for you. Um, I have my dodgy little areas in there and I, and I got sidetracked by Sophie's comment about uh, the basking shark image helps me. Okay. All right, so just give, me, just give yourself a moment to sort of think that through. What was working, what wasn't working. Lip trills are great because actually within the lip trill, remember, if you've not got much time, not got much energy, it delivers energy. It also gets you to think about and it actually delivers onset because you're starting to use your voice, okay? So it's a great shortcut into doing some maybe um, NG hums if you really want to or on straight into vowels so we're going to take a bit of a shortcut in just a moment to get to the vowels um, because um, Sophie's working on this this idea of the tongue root um, sometimes getting in the way and of course the tongue root is often um, uh, it's such an it's such a complex kind of network of things that all come together at the same time. There's tongue root tension that sometimes because it feeds into the larynx where the vocal folds are housed, that kind of feeling of general sort of uh, con constriction and tension can help to create a glottal onset. All right, so that's what I'm thinking. So we're gonna do an exercise in a minute where, where you can sh you can do a shortcut from doing lip drills if they were successful, um, straight into using an NG harm and intervals, and then we'll be thinking about onset for real. Okay, all right, so hope this is useful to you. Um, my little benchmark, if you're interested in what that is, is as I was doing those descending um, trills, lip trills i know where my little dodgy patches are uh, but i really have to focus on what this part of me down here my muscles are doing there and not get too caught up with here and also now i've finished i feel like these muscles on my face are they feel like they've been working already all right just because i'm as i take the air in it, it gives me that sort of feeling of surprise um intention right so it's just waking up your whole sort of being as a singer okay all right so now back down here we're going to do ng hum which we've done before okay so ng hum you do a whole slide up onto the ng hum an octave above you hang there for a moment and then you just let that little vowel you want peek out by dropping the tongue away from the soft palate because mm -ah, mm -ah, mm -ah, mm -ah. you can just about see my tongue going up and down 
So as you let that drop, out comes the vowel that you're thinking about. And we're going to start with R. Ah, okay? Let me just do that exercise again for you. Here we go. Ready? Um, you can join in with me if you like, but we're going to carry on with the sequence beyond that. And we're going to go A, R, E, E, O, U. Five of them. A, R, E, E, O, U. And can you see that I'm deliberately relaxing the front of my tongue, encouraging it forward, not sticking it out, but just letting it loll there, okay? Here we go, ready? And... Okay, this also, Debbie, try not to go wide on the E vowels. R, E, E, O. Next, here we go, and. Okay, next one. Oh, ooh, it was hard because you don't want to put your tongue forward. Here we go, and. So you see me keep pointing here. So I keep doing this because, of course, comments sit right in front of my face. <laughs> so I'm going sideways to see myself, but you can see me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so, um, okay, so how was that for you? Okay, now we're going to keep going up this time, going back to R, all right, and really concentrate on how relaxed you can make the front of your tongue just for this exercise this is what we're, we're trying to do is to relax the root of the tongue if the root of the tongue is relaxed and released it enables the larynx a certain amount of freedom and the jaw the three amigos they have to be independent of each other not interdependent so that's the larynx the jaw and the tongue they have to be able to do all their magic stuff without relying on each other but they kind of do it's tricky okay it's complicated that kind of relationship you know so same exercise still ng hum and then branching out into a into a vowel starting with r here we go ready and where you could go wide. E. Here we go. And. Okay. Och now, as in hot. And. precise kind of singing let me know how you got on and what I was going to say I couldn't remember what it was I was going to say is I keep pointing to here because <laughs> I've just seen Susie's comment about the fact she likes that exercise and luckily I did think about that they don't have anybody next door in the rooms next door that's what we like Okay, I keep pointing to this because, of course, this is where your vocal folds are, right? And remember, they're very small. 
the, the length of your little fingernail and three to six cells thick. They're doing their mucosal, mucosal wave at each other, all right? And that's what we rely on, those vibrations in the air to carry your sound, not volume pushing air. Yeah, Suze, you're not alone. The ooh, ooh, there's not is the, is always the hardest because you want to you want don't want to look stupid, and we wouldn't sing it necessarily like that. What in the warm up we're encouraging it, just so you know that you can do it all the time. Yeah, you can do it. So here I am, still talking about this because this is about onset, folks. Okay, you're in there, your little vocal folds, doing their mucosal wave, air is coming up, squeezing between them, picking up the vibrations, and eventually we hear your sound in that exercise with the NG hum, you are also thinking about resonance, because it, it you place the voice in such a way that it then, the vowel escapes, and you're more likely to have a really resonant ping. Okay, that is not the time to suddenly push with air. Okay, because you don't want to do that. You want to keep it super, what does David call it? He calls it um, feather light. Feather light. Can't, can't read that safe without putting my glasses on. Uh, the second part was easier than the first part. The vowel part is easier than the ng. Okay, it's very enjoyable to release the vowel, especially with the tongue lolling forward. Yeah, and there's a huge temptation when we do that. You do that exercise, I do that exercise, that you want to push the sound out. But really, it's about just letting the airwaves, the vibrations, just come out and do their thing. And then you come down the scale. All right, so now we're going to think about this point here. Because the vocal folds come together and they don't they don't create the vowel. You think the vowel, all right? What they are trying to do is to get. Oh, this is a bit technical. So if you're not sure what I mean by that, as the air comes up and meets your vocal folds like that, this is this resistance factor. There is if you get really balanced onset, which we're going to just have a go at in a minute, you get equal subglottic sub underneath as supraglottic pressure okay everything the balance and everything is all right if you've got glottal onset it's where the folds are coming together too harshly and just before the air comes along and it has to force its way through and then breathy speaks for itself right it's where it's not quite come together all right or as in Sue's years ago, your problem was that you had something in the way and therefore the vocal folds could not close properly and you've got this very sort of laboured breathy sound, which is no, fortunately no longer the case. So now, here we go. Now you've, you've done your kind of elastic bit of the warm up. Okay, and we will just finish with onset. Okay, because unbelievably our 30 minutes is nearly up. But we'll just try and conclude this for our own sort of for sake and you can do all of this on your own you can re-watch this bits of it that are really pertinent to you okay so we've done our elastic kind of warming up going up and down we've been down to a bottom d and up to about a g okay we we will in other warm-ups top technique tip ups top ups get to you know really getting up to those top a's but i feel for all of you this is the important bit okay so now on sets we're going to start slightly more generously on a middle c and all i want you to do is to do a a e o o o a a e with the thought that we just had going on as a theme through with the tongue and what is it doing so you're going to let it largely kind of all right debbie absolutely fine off you go and you can catch this later uh so what you can do is really really apply what you were just doing with the ng hum exercise that you love so much this one is never so much of a favorite but it's important because you're practicing each little onset like that and pr practicing onsets um, is just as important as lip trills lip trills kind of help you do it through your energy onsets doing onsets well without enough energy can be problematic okay so you have to really wait till you're very warmed up before you start thinking about doing onsets for real so here we go i'm going to alternate the vowel in the same sequence as we just did just now with the ng hum okay so i will do one you can join in with me if you've got it okay so just on sets nice and straightforward no breath in between each one here we go and it's going to go 
because as I'm doing it and I said no air don't take any breaths in between I'm thinking I'm not sure I'm gonna do it but I did do it but I've got my finger my index finger just on my larynx there and I can feel the movements and this I'd be very interested to know if you too can feel the movements in there okay so we're gonna do the same thing R E E or U or R E E, okay? But you're going to really just focus in on whether or not you can feel the sort of reset movements in there. No breath though. Here we go, ready? And R E E O U O O E E. I really could. Another one? Here we go and could you feel all of that okay just something now, one more thing to kind of wet your whistle is to do I'm going to change the vowel sequence just to be really annoying going to go back and do our incremental exercise that you know and I want you to get your fingertips involved here and you can really feel your instrument being played all right okay here we go ready so ready and Yeah, what well, Sophie? How? What do you mean by fairly high up on the larynx? The larynx, e e, that's too low down there where my fingers are. There, just on my clavicles, right? It's just in here where you can feel all the vibrations. E -a -a and that is your larynx and all these little integral sort of intrinsic muscles, making all those little adjustments for each pitch, and that's onset okay it's about the fact that you are re-onsetting you know joining it together but you are maintaining your onset throughout all of those notes so let's now do a sequence and feel free i can't play the piano and feel my throat uh, okay but feel just do a sequence you concentrate on that and see what you can feel now we'll just do the this the short incremental exercise not the longer one okay which i know you know let's just focus on this one here we go ready and because I keep leaning forward. So just check your postural alignment because it matters. Here we go, and. mind-blowing there in terms of pitch but there's a lot going on 
just like the, the paragraph that I read at the beginning of this se section, you have to think about the whole. If you're feeling constriction, feeling that it's not quite right, you have to really readdress the whole picture. Go back to basics and start again and get that feeling. Okay, now if you want one more thing to do to check your, your onset, is just take a whole octave, start the octave higher and just do a simple choose a vowel, the one you don't like. Think about all the things, right, the tongue. Uh, let's choose a vowel, bad vowel for me, what's that? Um, I think it has to be ooh, and I would do yes, that feels really hard actually. So take a vowel you're not from really fond of, and really scrutinise how you're getting ready. Remembering you're just trying to keep the tongue, the root of the tongue relaxed by the tongue coming forward. And mess around with that. Well, find out, you know, which um, E, for example, always used to not be my friend as a vowel, but now I've really got it sorted because I don't, I just relax my jaw. <laughs> and it's really important um, for you, Suze, as well, to do that exercise. If you pinch your nose, you should have no nasality. If you sound like this, it means your soft palate, your velum, is is not being arched away like a kind of yawny feeling in the back of your throat. Okay, we're going to stop there because I always could go on. I know I can. So Sophie says, in the bottom few, feeling with my fingers helped me manage the lower passaggio. Excellent, Sophie. Well, that's what you want to get from these top, oh, these technique top-up videos, okay? And it'd be great uh, if you just made a few notes maybe in the conversation below, you know, things that were really good for you, okay? But we're going to wrap this up for now because I, to I promised they would just be top-ups. We'd, we would talk about all the basics, but put give some practical solutions as to how you can overcome issues. Okay. Thanks for your time and your attention this morning. Bye for now.